Well, before we get to unboxing the boxes, I want to talk about Billy Joel. He runs with a dangerous crowd. They ain't too pretty, and they ain't too proud. You went uptown riding in your limousine in your fine Park Avenue clothes. You had the Don Perignon in your hand and the spoon up your nose. Yes. Now, we know that spoon up your nose means that she was doing cocaine. That's right. And Don Perignon in your hand means that she has a wine glass. But when I was a kid, I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. So when I heard that song, I thought, that lady got so silly last night, <laughs> she stuck a spoon up her nose <laughs> like a crazy goof. That just confused me further because I thought, do behaviors like that make you a big shot? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that what a being a big shot means? I guess so. The guy who gets drunk and puts a lampshade on his head at a party, he's mm -hmm. a big shot now? Yeah. The name of the song is Big Shot, in case you don't know that. And then, of course, I can't close this discussion without talking about the best part of the song. No, no, you had to be a big, big shot, shot ninja. ninja. Up, 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 up. Unboxing! That's the name of the show. That's what we're going to do. We've got our mail. Look at mail face over there. We're going to open that. We're going to thank our donors. People who go to welcometothebasementshow.com and contribute. People like these people. Matthew, who says, Megaforce thumb kiss to you all from across the pond. It's just not the same. Been watching for a long time now and could genuinely listen to you talk about films forever. You managed to give theories and insights on a level everyone can understand. I was wondering if you have ever thought about writing a book to accompany the show. Uh, I haven't thought about that. I'm not sure what it would be about, but I'm thinking about it now. I don't know if there'd be one that would accompany the show, but I could write a book about my career with movies. My career... My life with movies. I've thought about collecting all of my notes from the movies I've been watching. I've been I've been keeping kind of a movie journal for the last six years or so, but I don't know. I'm not sure how interesting that would be for people to read. Some more donors. Jeff, Anthony, Lindsay, Kenneth, Elizabeth, October. I used to want to name my child October. I thought it would be a beautiful daughter's name. Jamie, Michael, Abraham, Andrea, Luke, Brian, David, Gill, Carelock Services, Eric, Thomas, Robert, Kieran, Grant, Catherine, Stephanie, Nathan, Harrison, Stephen, B.A., Mikey D., Chris, Laura, Lee, Kai, Brett, J.P., Maurizio, Kendall, and Mark. The rest of our donors later in the show. And thank you to all of you fine fellas and felitas? Carelock Services. What do you think? Security company? Carelock. Storage lockers? P possibly. If you work for Carelock Services, leave a comment and let us know what your business does. We have so much mail. I went to the post office and it was more mail than we'd ever gotten before. So we've got a lot of mail to get through. We're going to be opening extra packages today and I'm going to be reading these postcards. Keep the U.S. postal system alive. It's in the Constitution. We have to. This is from Fargo, North Dakota. We took a little trip to the State Museum in North Dakota. Mm. People were mostly being safe and smart. All the best, Marshall and Catherine. Thank you. This is from Sean, who says, I had to follow Therese's lead and send you a postcard from home. This is Sean in his home. <laughs> with his handsome dog, Miles. Ah. Uh. The weather is fine. You wish you were here or I were there or anywhere for that matter. This is from the Esser Center, Sault Ste. Marie. Thanks for all the entertainment in these not-so-entertaining times. From Tim. And he wants to know if you've seen Jesus of Montreal. Have I seen Jesus of Montreal? The second film that showed on campus when I was a freshman in college, it made me decide to become a theater major. John and Alyssa in Toronto. Lots of Canada representing. Thanks for working hard to keep the show going, especially during these strange pandemic-fueled times. During isolation, me and my wife have six random movies we have wanted to watch written on a dry erase board. And we roll a six-sided die to choose for us. The list has been repopulated many times. Great idea. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Wow. What a fun idea. They want to know if we've seen Babe 2 Pig in the City. I haven't. I th Is that the one where he joins the circus? That's Pee-wee's Big Top. I think it's Babe 2 as well. Okay, I've never seen Babe 2. There we go. And we have a letter here from October. Of this year? No, oh, oh, October is the person. October the person from Rancho Cucamonga, California. I was in Claremont, California last year. I really hope you're safe out there in California. Scary stuff. October loves our show. It's a movie review show that is both funny and intelligent, both positive and honest, and just very warm and clever. Your show is like a cozy blanket on a more metaphorically rainy day. So grateful for all your hard work. October found our idea about a film festival featuring a movie from every decade of film set in New York City to show the evolution of the city and of the art and culture. 
October has curated that film festival. Oh. I'm not going to read all the descriptions, uh, although they're thoughtfully included. I will go through the titles. 1900s, Electrocuting the Elephant. 1910s, Regeneration. 1920s, Speedy. 30s, King Kong. 40s, Citizen Kane. 50s, 7-Year Itch. 60s, The Producers. 70s, Taxi Driver. 80s, Ghostbusters. 1990s, Men in Black. 2000s, Spider-Man 2 or Elf. 2010, Birdman. 2020s, Hamilton. I've basically written you a dissertation on New York City films that you didn't request. Well, we appreciate it nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm looking forward to going back and reading all those descriptions, and, and uh, that's that's a really neat thing to, to get to read through. So thank you for sending this letter. A uh, movie I would add to that the, for the 1960s, Sweet Charity, which we talked about a few weeks ago on the show. Yeah. That movie captures a lot of late 1960s New York. Oh, and for the 80s, I would also do something like Downtown 81. Oh, I don't know. About the art scene in the Lower East Side. There's just so many possibilities. Yeah. Okay, let's open two packages. If I'm reading this right, this is from Mike in Waco, Texas. I blow spots like Waco, Texas. With this, you now have all four Satoshi Kon feature films. It is done. From Grant. We've got Perfect Blue. From Mike, we have... Thanks Killing, starring Turkey, <laughs> College Kids, dead, Goofy Sheriff, dead, Sheriff Turkey, huh? <laughs> Turkey says, what's the darn movie about? Me, killing college kids, pun by pun over Thanksgiving break. Thanks Killing, just in time for the season. And the seasoning. When the air smells like smoke, and the twilights are orange and ash gray. Boy, this guy's a real $2 Robert Frost. My best friend. My blood brother. And when we became blood brothers, we cut our hands like this. Because that's the smart way to do it. Whee! Yippee! Woohoo! Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, sometime we should take the sidewalk. There's been a sidewalk here the entire time! Yours isn't coming back, is he? Not ever. Jeez, normally it takes a couple of drinks to be in you before you start talking that bluntly. I don't hear no music. Let's be that old wind again. That old wind. <laughs> Always up to its tricks. An electric storm to clean your streets and wash away your troubles. We got trouble here in Greentown, and that starts with an L and it ends with a G, and that stands for lightning. <laughs> Boy, Tom, young Jim Nightshade, what can I find you? Something from the Arabian Nights. When your name is Jim Nightshade, you're practically predetermined to be a serial killer. <laughs> Well, you're never going to be president now. <laughs> it's the, it's the, the imperial, imperial theme. theme, totally. Boy, the High Sparrow really fancies up good. Then rang the bells both loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. I do not like green eggs and ham. Leave them alone, Dark. You and I will settle this the library way. And Holloway, I'm going to give you a taste of death. Ah. Uh, uh. Oh, that smarts. And now some viewer questions. Napier Pictures. Hey, Matt, did you see the James Franco TV series adaptation of 112263? I thought it was really bland. I have seen it. I haven't. I sort of agree with you. Um, I didn't think it was bad. Tona liked it quite a bit. I probably would have liked it a lot more had I not read the book. I didn't like James Franco for the lead because Jake Epping is supposed to be this kind of Mr. Nobody, not a James Franco who... All eyes are on him every room he enters. Mm -hmm. I didn't like a lot of the changes that the show made, but I understand that they were necessary because a show is a show and a book is a book. But lots of things uh, I didn't like, particularly the character of Bill. But it was okay. I will say that the guy who played Lee Harvey Oswald in that is brilliant. It's a perfect performance. He gets every tick, that weird little funny voice he's got, and he just completely sells... The character of this little man who's been hounded by his mother his whole life and he has got something to prove. And so it's worth watching just for that guy's performance. Jack James Willits writes, I've had an obsession with Akira Kurosawa since you guys mentioned Throne of Blood in the first or second season. How were you introduced to his work? I was introduced to him through a little movie called Star Wars. I had heard that Star Wars was based on a Japanese movie called The Hidden Fortress so I thought, when I was in my late teens, I should go out and watch The Hidden Fortress. I did, 
and I saw no parallels between the two movies. There was a princess who had to be saved, and some knight-type guy who saves her. And then there's, kind of, I guess there's a C-3PO, R2-D2 There's two knuckleheads. Two knuckleheads yeah. who just argue the entire time, which I found really annoying. Luckily, a friend of mine uh, made me sit down and watch some of Ron soon after that. I'm like, okay, I like this guy. Let's open two more boxes. Ross in Asheville, North Carolina. This is from Alex and Amy in Deland, Florida. Dear Matt, Craig, and Tona, it's only been a couple of weeks, but I have to send another... Thank you for all the content I have been catching up on. It has been fun catching up with the movies I've seen and also oh, seeing some before your reviews to see how our thoughts align. Chris Cross and Putney Swope this past weekend. And there have been some I won't ever watch but enjoy your commentary. The one I debated seeing before watching your review was Tough Guys Don't Dance. I went ahead and watched your episode without watching the actual movie and I can't remember, especially in these times since I laughed so much. My kids walked in and asked me, what are you watching since I was laughing so loudly? Anyway, I enclosed some more money. Yo, hey, thank yeah. you. Thank you. In addition, with Halloween coming up, I have included a copy of Island of Terror. I uh, don't know if you've seen it, but I think it's awesome. It's not a Hammer production, but it has a Hammer director and Hammer regular Peter Cushing. And he also puts in a picture... Ryan O'Neill and the one potato he gets to eat. <laughs> Amy and Alex say they look forward to watching our latest episode together every weekend. And close are some goodies for you good folks. Your show has inspired us both to watch more movies and to watch them more closely. Please enjoy and keep up the great work. First of all, we have some vintage postcards that they found at a flea market. I'm not going to throw these because they look kind of uh, fragile. They're all in a foreign language that I can't read, but they're old movie posters. Humphrey Bogart, Veronica Lake, uh, Cary Grant, Grace Kelly. So there you go. Let's see here. Oh, and uh, of course there's Matt Dillon as Rusty James. Oh. That one I'll throw. No, this is a great movie. This is uh, actually Rumblefish. For some reason they call it Rusty James in this other country. And then there is a fun armadillo book for Lorenzo called Amazing Armadillos. Ooh. Another costume you're going to have to make. <laughs> and then one of my favorite albums in recent years, Planetarium, by, as pronounced by one of the local indie radio DJs, Suf John Stevens and three other dudes. Planetarium. I am looking forward to this. I have had mixed reactions to Suf John Stevens. Sometimes I really like it, and sometimes I find it a little too mannered. But I'm going to give this a shot. I think that Suf John Stevens doesn't want to be a rock star. He wants to be a classical music composer. And if he would just realize that and get it over with. Oh, and lastly, Amy sent this postcard. If you're ever in Sanford, Florida, this three-hour cruise is fun. The best part is the sticky buns. I'm working on an Ernesto painting. Wow, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Bye. No records to today. Records will return next time. we got too many packages to open. Um, and we've got some more donors to thank. Jenny Jawaka Record and Things. John, Gray, Tabitha, Amy, Christopher, Jonathan, Andrew, Corey, Danielle, Paul, Jorge, Stephen, Vincent, Sarah, Vance, Daniel, Krista, Jacob, Eden, Jared, Jeremy, Austin, Bridget, Reiner, Neil, Grace, Gilbert, Scott, and Samuel. Thank you. Thank you all. And if you're considering sending a record to Welcome to the Basement, consider buying it from Jawaka Records and Things. Or Carelock Services. <laughs> Two more packages, Lamette. God, he's giving me a dead big box. You're all right. Uh, and I'll take a smaller box. This is from Fans. Fans? In, in Coventry, Rhode Island. This is from James Ross again. This might be why earlier Ross said something about sending something last week. Thank you for everything. Much love. A gopher. Gopher? A little bit of money there. Thanks a lot. Okay, we've got stuff. Jim Henson's Muppets Take the Ice Trading Cards. <laughs> Amazing plus Incredible plus Mighty equals Dad. <laughs> I believe this is for me. The Sandra Boynton book, Going to Bed book, that is also oh, for Dad. Oh, Sandra Boynton is wonderful. Thank you. Science. Science. This is probably also for your son because that will never fit me. I think these are for me, actually. We've got two comic books here. Green Lantern, Judas World. Aquaman. 
And we've got a poster here. Jaws 19. This time it's really, really personal. I believe that was the one that's featured in Back to the Future 2. This is a very weird collection of things. Thank you, A Gopher. This is the previous thing that Brian sent us. Dear Matt and Craig, I found your show after watching Logan's Run a few weeks ago and was looking for comments about it on YouTube. I cannot tell you how much I've enjoyed watching your archive. You two are amazing. I haven't laughed and enjoyed anyone's insight into the films that I love more than I have since finding your show. You guys are genuine fans, and I sh uh, and it shows in all that you do. I've watched about half of your episodes, but I'm waiting to see the films you talk about that I have yet to see. And close are two tokens of my appreciation. First, a little money for content cameras and cat food. Woo! Wow. The other is a movie few people have seen, but a favorite of mine since I was a kid. The Strawberry Blonde. Huh. It's got James Cagney and the recently, finally late... Olivia de Havilland. It was a movie I saw on The Late Show as a kid and when I simultaneously, simultaneously fell in love with Cagney and Rita Hayworth. Her too. I return to it yearly and still love it. This could be an interesting movie. Well, all that's left is to recommend an episode from our back catalog for you to watch or rewatch. And today we have a special treat for you. Craig has compiled his personal top 10 list of his favorite episodes of the show. They're my 10 favorite episodes in general. And I've done the same thing. We both have two different lists, and there are no overlaps. So, at the end of this video, you'll find a playlist that you can watch Craig's top ten favorites, or at least find out what they are. And next time, you're going to get to see my list. Yeah. And right now, you can see this. Most beautiful. But she'll never be interested in you, Tom Fury. You're far too grizzled. You need to go to the barbershop and get yourself ungrizzled. Oh, you can't do that because the barber is now this weird fellow. <laughs> <laughs>